How you doing friends? Welcome back to another week here at The Potato. I hope you're all doing very well. And if this is your first time here, I would really appreciate your support. Please subscribe. So while this channel's main focus will always be movie themed with maybe just a splash of television thrown in here and there, for just this week, because we are well into the Halloween season, I felt like diving into the paranormal to discuss a personal experience. Last year, some friends and I were in Savannah, Georgia and toured the allegedly haunted Surah Weed House. Throughout this video, I'm actually going to provide some odd photo and audio anomalies that we captured during this tour. Now, I would just like to say my personal stance on the paranormal is that I am a believer, but I'm also a big skeptic. I don't believe every shadow and every noise is a ghost or a spirit. I feel it's truly important to rule out possibly anything that makes logical sense before saying something's paranormal. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So what you're about to see and hear here, we just couldn't explain. Let's take a look. So before getting into the audio and photos, I felt it was necessary to quickly touch upon the reasons why this beautiful home might be haunted in the first place. Designed by architect Charles Kluski and built for wealthy shipping merchant Francis Sorel and his wife Matilda, the story goes, and I'll keep this as short as possible to get to the audio and photos, Francis Sorel supposedly had an intimate relationship with one of his slaves named Molly. His wife Matilda found out and was so upset over Francis's betrayal that she hurled herself off the second story balcony and died in the courtyard. About a week later, Molly is said to have been found dead, hanging from a rope in the center of a room where she and Francis carried out the affair. Nobody knows who murdered Molly, and both women are said to be haunting the house. The only problem with this story is that while Francis's wife Matilda did kill herself by taking a leap, Many have disputed that records show Francis Sorrell had already sold the house at the time of Matilda's suicide, and they were actually living in the house next door, and that is where it actually happened. A real reason for her suicide is unclear. Affair, mental illness, who knows? Because no records of a slave named Molly or an affair with a slave can be confirmed. But even if we want to believe this tale, and let's say it's all true, I think a better explanation for these hauntings would be that the Sorrel Weed House is located within what was the British battle lines during one of the bloodiest battles of the American Revolution, known as the Siege of Savannah in October 1779. And with Madison Square literally right across the street, which was the center of the British resistance during the siege, that could have something to do with it. But a ghost story involving betrayal and infidelity certainly sounds more interesting. It wasn't until the flight home I listened to the audio that I recorded in the house, wondering if maybe I had caught something. Unfortunately, most of those recordings, I couldn't rule out the possibility that a noise or voice was caused by an actual person. After all, we were part of a group, so I had to dismiss anything I heard where this might have been the result of human interference. However, two of the recordings I can definitively say I have no explanation for. In this first recording, our friend Eric is playfully trying to taunt the ghost of a little girl named Sarah, who supposedly likes to play in the basement. He then feels something tug his ankle, and a voice that sounds like a loud whisper can then be heard on my recorder, which to me sounds like it might be saying the word ankle. Let's take a listen. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go. I think I made her mad. Did I make you mad, Sarah? That's pretty I'm sorry. Like something for my ankle. At the time, my recorder was set down, with me being a few steps away, with Eric and the tour guide a few feet away, and the group already wandering into the next room. Also, the fact that this was heard only moments after Eric felt something tug at his ankle makes it just a little more creepy. This second recording would happen as I trailed behind and was exiting the home from the basement back into the courtyard. I honestly can't make heads or tails of what is being said in this recording, but it's definitely a voice. Let's have a listen. Then, out of the dozens of photos taken during the tour, first, we have this photo, which, at a quick glance, doesn't look like anything abnormal. But, when we make it a little brighter, we see what looks like a black check mark just hovering in the air, and what looks like something, maybe a hand, trying to materialize. It's obviously transparent, 
as you can see the brick wall behind it. I snapped many other photos in this area, and nothing in that region seems to be able to explain what might have caused this. Now, in another photo taken, again, at a glance, nothing unusual can be seen. It's just dark with a red light at the top of the staircase. But, at the top of that staircase, I spotted something that looks like the shape of a person. My only issue with this photo is that it's at the top of the staircase where you have a banister in several different directions where light can reflect and cause shadows. This also could simply be a case of pareidolia, where our brains just take shapes and interpret them as something we know. What do you guys think? So there it is. The Sorrel Weed House is definitely a part of haunted history that I strongly suggest any paranormal enthusiast check out. While some of the spirits that might potentially wander this home could be the result of a death brought on by betrayal and infidelity, they might also be brought on by the many who just died in battle around this very spot. Or maybe both. Well, everybody, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Happy Halloween, sleep well, and I'll be back next week. Thanks. <laughs> Potato.